what an absolute pleasure it is. And listen, it didn't work out his way in Dublin um, a couple of months ago here when he fought Patchy Mix, but it always a pleasure to speak to the man. He's all the way over there in Kansas City. Are you in the airport yet, James? He's heading off to, to LA. It is the one and only Mr. James Gallagher. James, how are you, my friend? Well, my man, I'm good. So I'm just, ch- just chilling. Heavy morning, so I did get all the work done and that, and then just chilling on getting ready to fly out to LA this evening. Yeah, you've what, what's going on in LA? Can you can you can you tell us what's going on, or is that below wraps? Or <laughs> I'm flying out for a Super Bowl weekend. I'm out there. Uh, I'm flying out with a proper twelve in Sports Illustrated. I'm flying out to do an appearance to do at a watch party at the watch party that uh, part on sports and uh, all these different companies are having a collaboration of. Uh, they're all collaborating and holding a big like watch party and in the, in these kind of events. And uh, Sports Illustrator flying me out to do an appearance at their gig. So the Super Bowl weekends turn into the, the Jimmy Show, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure after this free proper twelve bar, it will. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Listen, James. Obviously, you know it, it was a tough night for you here in Dublin. But but as I said to you off air there before we came on, I actually thought. It was one of your best ever performances, in my opinion. I thought you, you looked so cool all week. You were so calm. There was a more mature demeanor coming from you. You walked into the cage that night, and you just looked flowy. You looked really good. You, you looked on point, and you said maybe there was there was a little bit of an execution issue with you that you didn't get you know, your game plan right. But in my opinion, I thought it was one of your most complete performances, even though you did lose the fight. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, there's so many positives to take away, and... And there's a, it was a new experience, you know what I mean? Going into that kind of, for me, it's kind of like, yeah, I, I'm a young veteran, but do you know what I mean? I've fucking nearly over 30 fights all, all, all in, but I I haven't been into the third round in a fight in fucking, I don't a know, long time. like a long time. So it doesn't, and not only have I not been in, but I haven't been into like a third round deep waters with like that next level of opponent. Do you know what I mean? I, I would class him as like a, there's kind of like a, superstars there's a class fighters and then there's like a minus mm. kind of like people and i would i would definitely class patchy as like an a level or an a definitely. minus kind of fighter and it's kind of like i haven't i've been in there with a, a b pluses do you know what i mean i've been in them d water with b pluses i just haven't been in there with, with, with that kind of next level guy yet and it was very good to experience that and and man i, I just fucked up and I'm there do you know what I mean I just I was there and I watched the, obviously the, round, the the first round I feel like I, I won the first mm, round and I agree the second, is I got held down a little too long so so I, I, I don't know if I would give me give me that but and then obviously the first the third round was uh, wasn't wasn't that long do you know what I mean but I came out there and popped the shots and there was a situation in the first round where I Took him down and I got on top of him. I had a reversal and I had him his back against the fence. And I kind of went for a guillotine and then I let it go. And it was kind of, I was getting into that technical kind of battle with it. I did kind of win it in the exchange, but I should have just broke off and smashed his face in. And that's the kind of errors that I, that I made when I was on the feet. I was picking him apart, landing nice kicks. But I don't know why I landed a nice kick. I should have just bit up my shin across his body and hit him through the fence you know what I mean no, not a nice kick something just a baseball bat straight across you know what I mean and pit them kind of march them down and put that kind of pressure on and my fight IQ wasn't wasn't uh, wasn't good enough you can t- uh, you can take a lot you can take a lot from that though James no from, from the, you said like even there yourself like you know you know he's an A-level fighter and I think everyone feels as though he is Um, you must yeah. be able to take away a lot from that though as well Oh, one hundred percent. Just, just uh, them, them experiences, man. It's like I've been there. I, I, I've done that now. I'm only going to make that mistake once. You know what I mean? Like it, that, that, that ain't happening again. Move calm. Move across the world on my own. Fucking having a kid. My, my life just changed. You know what I mean? The, the, the stress of events. That I've had that that week, people like it, it. Just it was it was crazy. There's a lot. There's a lot, lot, lot of what went on. And then when he missed weight, we didn't have a protocol yeah. in place for new negotiations and all that. And then I still walked out there and fucking just 
I'm happy with it. You know what I mean? I'm happy with the lessons that I learned from all, all of it. You know what I mean? From the experiences that I've learned quite weak going into it, how I handled all them negotiations, stuff that I would do different and stuff that I didn't, didn't do. And there's just a lot to take from it. You know what I mean? So I'm very grateful that, that it happened the way it happened. Is everything sorted in that front now, James? With the negotiations? Yeah, well, it's just we had to, it had to change up. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's uh, it, it just wasn't. It's like it, we just had to you know it was to get the fight on. Do you know yeah. what I mean? One team must wait, and then I uh, I resigned. Then after that, I resigned a new deal with Belzor, and and everything is all good. Do you know what I mean? So we, it, it wasn't that there was like a problems. There was just no protocol in place that we didn't have, and it yeah. was kind of like. I thought things were a little different and things weren't and it, it just it's just when the contracts get broken down and all they get very technical and it takes mm. hours and hours to play out, you know what I mean? And it's when you're not knowing if you're gonna fight or not is a big is a big thing, you know what I mean, to play around the head, but you just gotta keep it solid, you know what I mean, and, and keep going and keep pushing through it all. James, you know when you when you left to go over obviously to Kansas, you made that decision and you know, you're obviously, you know, you're synonymous with with, with Irish MMA and SBG, obviously. Uh, I know you still have a great relationship with John and the guys there, but um, you know, from from a mental point of view, you know, was it just getting a little bit too tough here, and you wanted to separate yourself, get away? Was there, you know, during the pandemic, I think a lot of people were down as well. It was hard to get up, especially in Ireland, because we we're one of the most lockdown countries in the world. Was that a big decision as well, just to get out of there, freshen up the mind as well? You know, a change of scenery. Yeah, one hundred percent. You know what I mean? It's kind of like. Man, I just want to be be a world champion. Do you know what I mean? I just want to be known. Just want to be one of the best someday. And I just had to get my mind somewhere. Do you know what I mean? And it's like here, I, I don't really speak to anyone. I've got a few friends, Christ and the boys, and in the gym. And then my man Podge is the who helps me with like absolutely everything from all my media to fucking everything else that goes behind the scenes. He's moving over here as well. So brilliant. We're just coming over here to go on a run. Man. We are just to go on a run, knuckle down, put the head down and have a buzz with it, you know what I mean? And are you enjoying life there, the cultural changes, everything? I see you have a house as well, uh, you put up on your Instagram. Yeah. Are, are you enjoying that? Have you have you taken to life in Kansas City? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I like it, Tony. I like it. It's just, it's just a, bit, a bit mad, you know what I mean? A bit different. Or it's, a bit, it's in the sticks. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? You're in the, in the little cowboy bits and... What, not have you have you got you. have you got I wouldn't say you'd be one for the L cowboy boots now, James, and a, and a hat, no. <laughs> I definitely, I'm definitely not a one for the cowboy boots. <laughs> 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 but I'm, no, I'm having a I'm having a buzz out here, and I'm enjoying, enjoying like just buzzing around, knowing who the fuck you are. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, nice. Do you know what I mean? You make your own mistakes. And and, and and mentally, do you feel in a better place? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I feel 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 solid. Mentally, feel feel. Still motivated and driven, do you know what I mean? I'm just out here working. Was, I mean? was, was there like, struggles in Ireland at, at that time for you mentally? No, nah, not, 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 in the, not in the gym or not. No, nah, I thought that's not good back then. I just, I, I've got a problem dealing with bullshit. Yeah. That's, uh, so <laughs> I get frustrated as fuck. Like, do you know what I mean? I couldn't be anywhere without walking in and wear a mask to walk to your table. It's like, mate, I have to take it off when I'm sit down. It makes no sense. Like, Fuck off, do you know what I mean? Just me be. <laughs> totally. So I, I was just, I would have got myself in trouble or something, man. So it's like what I do is when, sometimes is when you when you know you can't control yourself against all this bullshit, you should just remove yourself from the bullshit. <laughs> Very true. Very true. But I have to ask as well, like from a day to day point in the gym, like who would be your main training partners down there? Would it be like the, the likes of Tim Elliott and you know, obviously I think his 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 wife, his girlfriend Gina, are, are they the sort of guys that you'd be you you'd be training with a lot of the time there? Yeah, no, I don't think my, everyone would do wrong. I mean, I do wrong to James Christ and you know I mean the middle welterweight so it is and I mean I do wrong to anyone, but definitely Tim Elliott, Kevin Froome, um uh, Gina, um and they're they're all my kind of like me me size. Uh, farm partners, Derek Meaner, um, uh, a lot, a lot of these guys. So we're getting tough, tough rounds. And the best thing about here is that it's kind of like a, in the Midwest. If you get these guys, will come in and they might have no fight, but man, they're good. You know what I mean? They're they live in a farm an hour away from the gym, wrestling cows every day, and <laughs> my God, 
it, it, it's tough when you go in and there's like a different mentality and it's good it's good to it's good to get get them rounds it's like kind of like a back home it's like you, you know what I mean I mean like anywhere in Europe or any, any gym in Europe not not just like an FDG but you, it's kind of like the same mentality and then you'll get like the Oz Russian comes in or something like that he has that different kind of style that everyone kind of psychs themselves up to do a round with like all right fuck it let's go <laughs> do you know what I mean it's where here is every round like that and it's where it's only the odd guy is that kind of European kind of style? But it's not. It's not. It's not different. It's it's not that different style. It's where every round is just like a dog round scrambles with ten You're itching. You're like, itching to get back in there already, aren't you? I can tell by you. Man, I can't wait. <laughs> it's quality thing you buzz in. It's just every day. It's just just really, really competitive and really, really good. And it's like I, I'm not. I don't do anything else. You know what I mean? That's that's where I'm at. And I'm just just really up with it these days you know what I mean I, I, want, I want to I'm, I'm changing everything and it, it's kind of like after the fight I remember I was going a little bit and even the other day I was speaking to Pudge we, I got this deal done and I was like oh fucking quality telling how much I got and whatever and he's like if you become the champ it's going to become the norm this, this kind of thing Wow. and I was like hopefully I was like hopefully and then I was like I ripped back to him and I was like hopefully and I was like it's not hopefully like let's fucking get it so now I'm like changing everything from every word that I say that comes out of my mouth it's definitely that's happening it's already starting to happen it's going to continue to happen and it's going to be that way do you know what I mean so I'm really going to try and change a lot and just how I see things things I see and how I go about it and really put my mind to it do you know what I mean it's just trying to speak it more is where I kind of stopped doing that I used to do that when I was a young kid and everyone used to be like oh you're do you know what I mean? I used to go, I'm going to get all of these belts you said every week. And everyone used to be like, oh, he's all talking, he's all this. And I haven't, I haven't really done that, done that as much, you know what I mean? But I'm not even going to start speaking it again, telling everyone what I'm going to do. And just keep working hard. And it's like, telling everyone what you want to do. And it's like, yeah, you feel and then you learn from it. It's like my last one, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, look how much I've learned from that now to carry into my next one. What about when I go back into the third round with someone who's at that level of fighter? I'm going to march him down and go, fuck you, and hit me fist in his head. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's how, that's how it is. Where this time is like, I try to be that technical kind of deal, uh, battle. Is where I wasn't, that, that he was still in that technical battle, but he wasn't, he was going out of the fight. And I was still in the fight. And then my, I, I just got beat on that technical battle that ended it. But if I had fought him and not got into a technical battle, I feel that I could have wore a mic that he wouldn't have had that technical side left at the later side of the third round. What a fight it was. I loved it. I thought it was a brilliant fight. You know, the three rounds that we watched there was the fight of the night for me, in my opinion, anyway. But um, yeah, listen, you mentioned it there, right? You are, you're clearly itching to get back in. I, I know by you. I know. By you. You're, just, you're, like, you're just sort of hopping around. You're excited. You're, you're, you're buzzing. <laughs> right. This... Grand Prix, Bellator, you know, and we've talked about it, everyone knows that, you know, the 35 and their 45 pound divisions are probably some of the best around in mixed martial arts, easily compete with the UFC in my opinion. This Grand Prix is unbelievable, James, the names that are in it. But right, I know you haven't had a fight booked, they haven't put the brackets together yet or whatever at the moment, but who do you want? Like, there's obviously a standout amount of names in that division. Is there one specific name that you want to fight in this Grand Prix to kick it off? Yeah, 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 there's there's a couple one, one how how it all went down with uh, Stott. So it it's is Rafi on Stott. Yeah, yeah. So he's he's little thirty three year old, twelve year old acting <laughs> motherfucker. Um. So I I met him one time in the in in the Mohegan Sun. I I seen it. I knew his name. So then I knew his name because he we were going back and forward on Instagram or something and blah blah blah. And this guy. Approached me one time in the middle of the Mohegan and paid his hand, and I was like, He looks like a fighter, but I didn't know who he was. And he was like, Ah, what's up? Whatever. And so I've talked a lot of shit about you online, but I've got respect for you. And I, I didn't know who it was, but I was like, All right, sound nice one. So I just kind of put on like a tough front, do you know what I mean? I shook his hand and left. And I was pointed out to him, I was like, who's that? And they were like, oh, that's Ralph and Stott. And I was like, ah, oh, so I seen him. And he was like, ah, that's fucking you. Like this, so we're, we were cool about it, blah, blah, blah. And it, it was all good. 
Yeah, Rafi was talking a lot of shit about you. He was saying that he always signed me up on like a day's notice and we knew that wasn't possible at the time and stuff. Obviously, he didn't have his bloods, his tests, that and done. You know, a lot of guys tend to do this, but... Yeah, yeah. So, this, so that, that was cool. So I, had a, I was like, ah, oh, you come up to me, you know what I mean, for, for a deal. So then I went, I was like, ah, oh, you yeah, actually all right, you know what I mean? He's a bit of a, he's a bit of a, he's a like, if you know man, he's, what is he? he's like, he's mad old, you know what I mean? I even he looks, he looks, he's like 30 old, so is. But he, he acts like a man, I so he's what he's got, he's a brain in him, like 13 years old. <laughs> he, but, um, so then I seen him, I seen him then, uh, the announcement of the tournament. Okay. Right? So he comes up to me, uh, I'm standing there with Patchy, so I'm speaking to Patchy. He comes up and was like, wow, man, he was all, I have never seen an event like Dublin. Because all these motherfuckers come to events like the way yeah. I come back home. You know what I mean? None of them. It's, it's unheard of around Bellator. So then he comes up and he's, man, I've got nothing but respect. Blah, blah, blah. Like, we're cool. So I put my hand out. We're shaking hands. We're talking. It's all, it's all cool. Do you know what I mean? So from that point on, it's like, all right, we've got to respect. You know what I mean? It's like, blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. But it's clear that we can fight. You know what I mean? So then last week I see this motherfucker being online and going, James doesn't even, I don't even think he should be in the tournament. That's what he goes to me. And I was like, so you're telling me to my face that you have nothing but respect for me. But you're posting a video online calling me a little leprechaun and all these gestures and then saying that I, I'm not even good enough. So not, not, not only are you like trying to fight or whatever, that's just like, do you know what I mean? It's like, I should fuck you up. I'm better than you, but I'm not even good enough to be in this. That, that's one thing. You can compare me against you and say you're going to fuck me up and whatever you want to say. But to say that I'm not even good enough to be in this tournament, the week after, I'll tell me how good I was. Oh. I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't deal with that. So I can't wait to walk up to this motherfucker and show him what respect is as soon as I see him again. So that's the name, so that's like, the name you want to kick it off, Rafian starts. I like just put him back in his box. Don't be coming up fake. Like, be real with it. Don't don't do it online. It yeah, reminds me of the, the AJ McKee stuff. Yeah, man. That's that's how I, that's how it was, and it was real kid. Like, I don't know. It was just like, all right, for me or whatever. Like, go go away from me. Do you know what I mean? It was a bit 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 weird, or I don't know what the fuck it was. But I was like, don't don't do that. Do it to my face. You know what I mean? We're not gonna, like you're not like. What, what do you think we're going to fight in the lobby and get arrested? Like, you come up to me and put it on, I'll definitely... <laughs> don't mm. get me wrong, I, I, I've not done it before and I'll do it again. <laughs> These motherfuckers are across the line. So, don't, don't, don't do that. Do you know what I mean? Be real with me. Come up and, and say that to my face. Don't say you've respect my face and then go go and personally insult me mm. behind, behind my back. And like, yeah, I can, like, obviously I was there for a lot of that, you know, and I saw the way AJ was acting. So, you know, I can relate to that exactly <laughs> firsthand. Yeah, I did. I was there for the whole week. And, yeah. Was, isn't it, it's, yeah, you're one of the few that know. Yeah. It isn't that, was that the most, like, like, nothing to AJ. AJ is one of the best fighters Yeah, in the I world, agree. Like, totally I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that, he was. Was that, was that, was that both the sad thing? Yes. Yeah, boom, fuck yeah. it. No, no, I agree. He was trying to get under your skin and he was trying to be your pal and putting his arm around you, you know, when the cameras were off yeah. and stuff like that. That's the way it was. Generally was. Yeah. We yeah. saw it even in the and gym. Sure, I was the one who yeah. I was the one who had the, the camera when Anthony went, went nuts and all that. So, like, come on. Like, Why is it that I always just seem to be the best one? No, I, like, pfft, I agree. I know, man, I was there. I know. And, all, you know, all the other Irish MMA media heads will, will tell it the same as well. So, it's definitely yeah, the way yeah. it is. And and I see it when I go online, everyone's like, oh, James is fake this, and James is fake this. And you see now that I'm in the game and I'm maturing a little bit, now I'm 25, not, not 18 no more, do you know what I mean, the way, the way it was back then and stuff. But it's like, I was actually, even when I was 18, I was, the, and everyone was, like, even though I was brash and I did say stuff, I was 3-0, and call my Patricio Pitbull, who was 35, do you know what I mean, yeah. that's a bit far-fetched. But, but I was the realest motherfucker in the whole thing. Yeah. They were all, they were all, <laughs> They were, all, they were all calling me fake. I couldn't believe it. That's, what I, that's, that's hard to deal with. And then as people, they see you. It's like, actually, I'm the only Pokemon that's actually sticking to my word of what I say. Yeah. That's oh, madness, madness. But listen, yeah. that, that must give you serious motivation. Obviously, a million dollars as well. You know, you've, you've a kid on the way with your, uh, your girlfriend, Victoria. That's like... 
it's big, big bucks on the line here for that. Is, is that extra motivation yeah. on top of wanting to be the world champion as well? Yeah, 100%. You know what I mean? Kind of, uh, win this tournament, you know what I mean? I'll be a uh, 25-year-old multi-multi-millionaire. You know what I mean? That, 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 G- give <laughs> us a tenner, definitely. James, will you? Yeah, and it's like even the noise that mad is kind of like, I don't got a fight. I'm making over six figures a year the belly fighting. Do you know what I mean? I'm making, I'm making Sponsor. a lot of, I'm making a, I'm making a lot of money, and it's it's kind of like what it's, money is. It's a hard a hard thing to go when you when you're getting into starting pro and you start making small money that you think is big, and then you actually start making decent money, and it's like kind of going, I don't fight for money. Come on, I, I don't fight for money. So I don't, I don't take everything I've got, you know what I mean? Every fucking penny came a bank account. And I don't care, you know what I mean? I, I care about winning and the results deep, deep down. That, that's really what I care about. No, don't get me wrong, then there is the other side where I'm definitely a businessman and I want all the money and I'm coming for it. And the reason why I'm earning so much money is because, compared to other people, is because I obviously want to and I, I know how to do it. And... Uh, and that that that's 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 the uh, that's that's why I am. But it's not a boy that. So it doesn't mean you start earning these money. It's a sad day that you realize that this, yeah. this isn't why. You know what I mean? It takes you a little mental barrier to get over that. Definitely, I think we've seen that with, with other guys. You know, the the money sort of clouds their ju- their judgment. But um, I, I have to say this to you as well. You know, when you were in a renegotiation with Bellator fighting championship, you said you just signed a you know a new deal, all that. Um, after the Apache Mix fight. Was there any offers from the UFC or anything like that? Did that come in? Have they been sort of knocking on the door? Were they trying to get in with you? Know? No, uh, no. So I was not a contract. I never tested free agency. Okay. I had three or four fights left. left. Okay. Myself. Yeah, so I did, but we just had to change some things. And uh, yesterday's price isn't today's price, man. <laughs> <laughs> Good man, Jimmy. Good man. Good man. So listen to me. How's the hand, James? Obviously, you, you injured the hand. You had an operation on the hand. How's everything with that? And when, when are we going to see you back in there? Because everyone's excited. Because there's, there's a good buzz around Irish MMA at the moment, I feel. It's buzzing. Yeah, man. It's quality. So it is. I wish I could go back for the 25th, but I can't go back for me fucking issues. Yeah. So I'm gonna- Stuck here in the States for a while, but um, uh, now I'm on the hands. Great, I can back moving, strength, everything, a nice scar on it. You know, oh, wow, well, so, yeah. So, but I, I've got a picture where, where I, I know where it happened. It was in the second round of the fight, and I've got a picture where I just smashed it straight off Patchy's forehead. And uh, I remember it happening, so it did, because uh, I banged it up in the, in the training camp as well a little bit. And then uh, after, you could still move it, and it was weird, and I went in, and then... Uh, Professor Dan Healy is a, is a really great, great friend of mine and someone I have the utmost respect for him and uh, he, he overlooked the event and is a, is a surgeon. He overlooked all the medical events. Yeah, he was that's right. At the event, I back into the dressing room because my, something happened to me after the fight. It's like I, I passed out and stuff. You, you, you passed out after the fight? For over an hour. My what? Eyes, well, what happened? It went, you just collapsed? No, they don't. Collapsed. So I did in the room, yeah, I took how to get two IVs. Um, my eyes went, no, my pupils yeah. went pure, like, black in the room. And I they were, like, clicking over my I thought it was, I thought it was out for about three seconds. And I was speaking to Victoria, and she was saying, oh, my, like, you we were there for over an hour and a half, two hours. And they were, like, clicking, jam, 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 and, and all this. What was the, did you, did you get a diagnosis of what happened? No, they're not. They, they weren't sure, so I started throwing up blood in the cage. What? I threw up blood in the cage, um, went out, and then uh, I kind of was like getting sick and I seen throwing up, like wrecking, wow. like blood coming up, and then the eyes, I lay down after I got sick and I was like exhausted. So my eyes, but then it was the maddest thing ever. Did it? My eyes just went like bing, like just like instant, like puff. And I just was like, Gink. "My <laughs> goodness!" So I don't, I don't know. I, I don't remember. And is so that is that worry is that worrying for you? Have you got further tests to, to try and find out what what was what was happening? Yeah, I, I walked out of the thing. I felt good. I felt well done. Let's say I had to get a flight to like four AM or something. 
I felt fine. There was nothing. I went to the doctors, had a close, like, look, had all t- more tests done, rested up. And, and everything was fine? I, everything was fine. Wow. So it was, I was, like, severely severe. I took, like, two IV drips in, like, okay. minutes or something. Or it was very dehydrated and stuff like that there. And I wasn't concussed because I didn't take any headshots, they, 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 they said. But... They didn't, they didn't know what the fuck was going on, but it was bad. It was like the blood thing was concerning. Yeah. It was, but that, 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 that stopped the next midday, next, the mid, next day. So once that stopped, they were like, oh, you're good now that that stopped. You know what I mean? But that was, it was a mad, mad situation. Wow. That is crazy. Listen, I hope you're, I hope you're, I, I, well, obviously you're okay now, but that would yeah. be, that would be I, pretty I, concerning. I, I, Mr. Ma, <laughs> I'm not bad for me, Mr. Ma. <laughs> yeah. Poor Dorian and Andy, bloody. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, it was a yeah, it was just a victory. Man, she was all the only thing was she could just be my dad, and he was like, "You're okay, you're okay, you're okay." Because when I came back around, I freaked a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I did after the. And, and, and everything is totally fine now. It's like neuro- neurologically as well. Everything was 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 perfect. Nothing. Nothing wrong, and I I wasn't like obviously I was upset, but I yeah, I was fucking. So I was I was good, you know what I mean? I wasn't. I, I, I was, it was mad, so it was fucking nuts. And I, I was good after it and everything. The next week, I, I went back into the gym after the next like a few days later, and felt good. I did some recovery training, and uh, my thumb was still happening. You know what I mean? So yeah. I was trying to like like my thumb or whatever. So I went back onto the mat then one day, and I couldn't get the pain. It was too unbearable. And then I went to, to get the MRI, and the doctor was like, sent to me, he's like, you, you do know that there is nothing like holding your thumb to your hand? And I'm like, you're lying to me, mate, because I, I just barred <laughs> a few what? days ago. And like, I was like, it's sore. It's very, very sore, but it's grand. So then <laughs> I, he, he, opened, he opened me up, so he did on the, on the, on the table, and I, he took a video of it. The, the surgeons are mad, mate. They're, they're, they're a bit much, you know what I mean? They are, but... Uh, <laughs> He's a top. I went to I went to uh, San Jose to get it done on some top hand specialist. Uh, so and uh, I went in, but me he took the video when he passed me out. So you see the nose of your your thumb here. Yeah. He could take it back. He touched my wrist. Oh no! Oh, don't be telling me he that. He twisted. He twisted it, and it was like oh, it was horrible. But I couldn't believe that I could do that to my son. Do you know what I mean? Because I was so like fucking mother of God. And, like, yeah, <laughs> it's been an, an interesting few weeks for me, it, it's, it's, it certainly has. It's, it's more dramatic than my day, even today. And my 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 day was pretty dramatic, as I was telling you. I've, I'm doing this on 4G because my bloody I, I I broke the fucking connection. I knocked over the the internet router earlier on. It smashed. It's not working. So typical me. <laughs> you're always giving me grief at events, James, for knocking over cameras and stuff. So there's, it's another one. Yeah, because every time there's always. One, there's always one stand going <laughs> true true i'm a clumsy git um but listen just, just a couple more for you go um obviously a new arrival when is the new, when is the new arrival when is when's the baby coming when what, are we soon so imagine 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 going through all of this while trying to move house <laughs> and and have a pregnant girl <laughs> <laughs> mother of god <laughs> Some some crack of hot mate. So it is. He's a, he's born on May May 11. Oh, brilliant! Any, any names you, you can share with us? Yeah. Gonna call him after his grandfather. Brilliant. So he's gonna be Charles Gracie Gallagher. Amazing, amazing. So he is, so he's, yeah, he's gonna be a powerful man. This is all definitely mellowed you out, Mister Gallagher. You've you've chilled. I can, I can see yeah, it. I, yeah, I don't, don't know, man. It's just a bit just much. You know what I mean? It's kind of. You gotta be careful, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, I, I look up to my dad, you know what I mean? Yeah, and of course. I, my dad's a mad cunt, you know what I mean? He is, so, I know him well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's the best, the best example, you know what I mean, to go by, but he's still a mad cunt, you know? And it's kind of like, I, I know that now, you know what I mean? So I, I want to set an example for him and, and be... I, I want to live... I'm not going to be different, you know what I mean? And still, still, you know what I mean? If it's, if it's fuck me, it's fuck you. And that's 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 how it is, and I'm not going to change that. But it's definitely, do you know what I mean? I want I want him to be able to. I can't tell him, do you know what I mean? What to do and how to behave. So I'll just show. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's what I'm going to do. And I change. I'm not going to be the little 
softy the way I, I see so many people do it. And it's like, oh, no, you know, like swearing in front of your kids. And yeah, yeah that's a good one, but it's just, it's your kids, your kids going to hear a lot worse than a, than a swear word. I agree. You know that's, I mean? that's, that's what I always say to me, to my sisters and stuff like that. I have about seven nieces and nephews and listen, there's a lot worse things than bloody swearing going on. I yeah, agree. Yeah, so, and it, for me, I, I'm very, very lucky to be brought up from a place that's kind of like, you know what I mean? It's not, 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 it's not, it's not where I live now, you know, that's, that's for sure. Where, where my, my young fella is going to be brought up and, uh, and he, he won't have, he won't see some of this shit, you yeah. know what I mean? Like he's on and on here or whatever, it's a push, it's a little push base. I feel weird driving into because it's all like, <laughs> like somewhere out of he'd be riding a horse and he'd be you know getting the cattle from the ranch in Kansas you can see them all you know what I mean they're living like all these sack and all the fucking white guys running crushing the prams and it's a bit mad you know when you see on TV or that but um uh it's good, but I want to I want to just show him and for the way my dad did, and he was always yeah. real with it. You know, he was like, you no, know, people would hide stuff from their kids, and it's kind of for me. It's like I I never got big into, I never went down any. Yeah, I mean, I dabbled into a few fucking things, misbehaving on the streets, and just doing teenager stuff. But I never went down no bad roads or anything because I knew about it. You know what I mean? I, I knew about getting into all the trouble and whatever. I was informed about all the drugs and you know what I mean and all this kind of stuff. And 100%. it was never, it was never, don't do that. Do you know what I mean? Not once did my family ever tell me, don't be getting out there and getting into gangs and fucking not gangs back home, but just you know yourself. Yeah, yeah, of course. Is it and that or don't they kept you on the correct drugs. path. Don't be, yeah, don't be drinking. It's like, you can do whatever you want. But you see, if you do that, this is the way this will leave you. Yeah, there's a consequence. If you up down that road, pick your road, sir. You know what I mean? Pick, pick your road. And I'm just very grateful for that. And the, my dad always, there's been a few times where I've been out and I've done a few things. And he knew it was going to backfire. You know what I mean? And then I'd go back. Look, I told you so. You know what I mean? And this is just day-to-day -day life stuff. And then after a while, you, you, you kind of mature and realize and you, you, you learn to think for yourself. You know what I mean? And that's what I was able to do. James Gallagher, as I've always said, a man above his years, greater than his years. Listen, my friend, it's, it's always great to speak to you. I wish you all the best with, you know, uh, the Grand Prix coming up and obviously, you know, Victoria and yourself having a kid. Nothing but well wishes to you, my man. Always appreciate the time and go and enjoy LA and don't drink too much of that uh, that whiskey. <laughs> appreciate it, bro. Thank you so much. Always good to talk to you. Thanks very much, man. Appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this, do hit the subscribe button and also the notification button so you don't miss any future updates. You can also catch us on social media and also give the video a thumbs up. It does help. Thanks, guys.